Lecture 9.5, the applications of current carrying parallel conductors. Before we start on the applications, I first want to analyze the force between two parallel conductors. First, let's analyze the force between two parallel conductors with parallel I mean, not parallel, excuse me, with same and opposite current. So we're talking about the force between parallel conductors. Most of the times when we say conductors, we really mean wires, but in this situation, you'll see that they're, that they could be different. Since each straight wire is immersed in the magnetic field produced by the other wire it will experience a magnetic force. between them. So let's start off with parallel currents. So if I have parallel currents, let me move this up higher. So if I start off with parallel currents, then I'm really imagining that I have a current that looks something like this. I have a conductor. And let's say it's this long. Remember, they're supposed to be infinite. In other words, very long compared to the radii. So I'm going to color this one blue. So in this situation, we're saying that we have currents, let's say, I1. And I'm going to bring another one really close. Let's say this close. And this is a different wire, therefore a different color. But it also has a current. And we're going to say that the current is exactly the same. So if I look at the blue wire from the right-hand rule, that means I have to have a magnetic field that's counterclock, counterclockwise. And so if I look at this thing, this thing is going to wrap around. And if it right in here, it's going to go into the wire. So if I look at the wire right here, you could see that the field, oops, is going into, so it's going to have a field that goes into there. Now, if I look at the green field, well, it's going to, of course, it's going to wrap around in exactly the same way. 
But what we're seeing differently here is that this time, the field is coming what? Out instead of in. So in other words, we're looking at magnetic field one, another magnetic field two here. And so now the magnetic forces are are then going to be, so if I look at the, the blue wire, the blue wire, do I want to look at the blue wire? No, yeah, let's look at the, the field produced by the blue wire. Ah, it doesn't really matter the order that I do. So if I look at the blue wire, I'm going to see that I have a magnetic field that's coming out. I could see that the current is going up. Therefore, I'm going to get a magnetic force that goes to the right. And this is going to be the force of two acting on one. Now, if I look at the other situation, now we're looking at the force on two. You'll see that that magnetic field is going into. And you could see here is that their current is going up as well. So therefore, I'm going to get another from the right-hand rule. It's going to tell me that this is the force of one on two. So what you're seeing here is that I have an attractive force between these two wires here. So picture-wise, what I'm really seeing is that I'm seeing this. I have two wires. And so when I look at these guys, they're going to experience a force that does what? If they have the currents moving in that direction, as we said, then they're going to experience an attractive force between the two. So if they're separated some, let's say some distance X, then picture wise, that's what I'm seeing. Now, if I do the opposite situation, where I now have opposite currents, I'm going to steal the blue one because I'm going to keep the same wire. So I'm going to keep this guy fixed. So then I have to be careful about what, what I have right here. So let me modify this just a tiny bit. So there's that wire, but now I'm going to have a current that's going to be different this time. So in this situation, I now have an orange line, and that tells me that now I have a current in the opposite direction. So playing the same game that we just did in the previous situation, I'm going to have a magnetic field that comes in, and as it comes in right here, we see here that it's going into and again, that's the magnetic field due to one. Now, if I look at the orange field, well, this guy actually rotates in the opposite direction. So this one, when it comes in here, it's also going to go into the, the screen. And that's going to be the magnetic field of two. So now, again, the magnetic forces, what do they tell us? In this case, we have, if I look at the, the field acting on wire one, it has a magnetic force coming in. 
due to, excuse me, magnetic field, it has a current going up. So then in this situation, the force is in the opposite direction of the earlier situation. But now, if I look at the other situation, this will be B1, we're seeing that this current is actually going down, which is I2, and that's going to produce a magnetic force in the opposite direction. In other words, these guys are repulsive. So when I look at these wires, we're seeing that these wires are actually pushing each other away. So there is clear repulsion in this situation. And again, this is for the situation where they have opposite currents. So that current's going like this, and this current is going like that. Now we could calculate the force between them. We can calculate the magnetic force between these two conductors. using our standard equation that we derived earlier. So if I look at the force of one on two, actually it's the opposite, it's the force of, yeah, if I do one on two, then this has to be the current of, let me be careful here, that's going to be the current of 2 times its length times its magnetic field due to 1. And so if we start writing out these details here, this will then be, you know what, they have the same current, so it doesn't make sense to write it that way. They have, we need that length. So if I write this out in detail here, this will then be I L2, but we know the magnetic field of a long wire, which is 2 pi x divided by mu naught I1. So if I clean this up just a little bit, I'm going to get 2 pi x mu naught i1 i2 times the length and that's the magnetic force i would then say that however it is customary to write this relationship as force per length. And from Newton's third law, we could then write this as mu naught I1 I2 times 2 pi x. And this right here is the force per unit length. That's our magnetic force right there. 
Now, we have an apparatus, which is not a great apparatus, but we should, but I'm going to use it anyways. And then we'll look at some videos. And here's how we, we see this force here. So there's something called, it's known as a current balance. And sometimes it's also known as an ampere balance. But mostly I know of it as a current balance is a device used to measure the force between two parallel conductors. that carry the same current. So here's a picture that I have. So this is the current balance and I probably should have wired this with red and black, but I didn't, but let's look at what I have here. So you're looking right here and you could see that there are two rods right there. Those two rods, these guys right here, these are the two parallel conductors. Now, what you're gonna find here is one of these rods is stationary. So if I look at this guy, you're finding that this rod right here is a stationary rod. In other words, it does not move. Now, we have another rod, which is this guy right here. And the one out here, right there, this is the movable conductor that is balanced that that is balanced by a counterweight And so when you look at the counterweight, you could see that this guy right here is the counterweight right there. So this thing is actually floating. It's balanced, you know, on, on a fulcrum or a pivot. So now what we want to do is that we want to start looking at images. And here's what you find. If you have no current, if there's no current in the conductors, the rods start with an initial separation. So everything is relative to this separation. So when I'm looking at this, right now, what I'm seeing here is that I'm seeing that I1 is zero and I2 is equal to zero. There is no current. So that is the fixed distance. So now what happens is we start to run current through them. So if we run current through them, here's what we're seeing here.
in this situation over here, we have opposite current, current directions, I should say. And what you're seeing in this situation, since I'm the one that did this, I know that the current in this situation is I1 coming like that. And I know that in that the current here is in the opposite direction. So I have two. And then what you're seeing here is that there's going to be a force produced by the blue wire on the orange wire that's going to be perpendicular. And that's going to be the force of two acting on one. Analogously, there's going to be an opposite force of force of one on two. So they separate. In this situation, we have the same type of thing here, but now they have the same current directions. Believe it or not, the way you get them to do this here is that you we treat this as a circuit in each rod you can think of this as a resistor so this turns out to be rods in series and these are rods in parallel that's how you wire them up so in this situation you can see that they have clearly come together and that's because in this situation, we have both currents going in the same direction. So then we have forces that are bringing them in contact like this. Or they're actually not in contact, but right there, it's really hard. The best video by far is this guy. There's some really good ones out there, but I wanna share this video with you. Here's an MIT demo one, and let's check this out. Really well done. So what I'd like to do is just sort of like highlight what this video was saying here. And I want to grab an image. So again, what we just looked at is that we looked at a YouTube video. And this is called forces on a current carrying wire. And here's what we find. So if I come in and I just insert images that I took of the video here, here's what we're seeing right here. This is where the current was zero. This is where they have opposite currents. In other words, in this situation, I have a current, I1 come in like this, and I have this current going in that direction. Now it's hard to tell here what's going on here, but here's what we do see. 
we know that one of these currents is I1. The other current is coming like this. These are insulated wires or cables. So therefore, if they make contact, they're not shorting each other out. But in, the, in our lab situation, they're not insulated. And so that would be a real problem for us. So what about this current balance? The current balance is used to numerically set the value of the magnetic permeability constant of the vacuum slash air. So from our force equation, one sets the currents I1, I2, the length L, and the distance X to values of one without units, of course. This allows us to set the force equation to isolate mu naught. So if I look at the force per unit length, this is going to be mu naught I1, I2, 2 pi x. So now we just put in the proper units. So we set I1 equal to I2 is going to be 1 amp. We're going to set x equal to 1 meter. And now, and we also set the length equal to 1 meter. And when you do that, you'll find here is that I could write F is equal to one meter, F divided by one meter, and I'm gonna get mu naught times one times one amp squared divided by two pi times one meter. And then we get a relationship that now reads F is equal to mu naught divided by two pi. So by doing this, or by definition, one can set a very close force value supposed to be exact of two point as many sig figs as you can get times 10 to the minus seven newtons. Then this sets the 
numerical value of mu naught to mu naught equal to four pi times 10 to the minus seven newtons per amp squared. Okay. 